In this video, I'm going to show you how to make these fused silver dust earrings with Potter USA's asymmetrical coin pancake die, and we'll even do a little catch on the back. So the first thing that we're going to do here is fuse silver dust to our silver. Here I have a piece of 20 gauge sterling silver, and I've already applied a thin coat of paste flux to the surface. This will keep the surface of my metal clean and allow the silver dust to fuse more easily to the surface. So I'm just gonna heat and boil off some of the water in the flux and then I'll start sprinkling my silver dust on the surface. And this silver dust is just from sawing and filing at my bench. I keep a little um, catch pan for it I've sifted larger chunks out of it, but it still has like some burr life and probably some sawdust from my bench pin. So you will notice it smoke a little bit as I sprinkle it on the surface here. That's okay. Any impurities will burn off. So I'm just trying to sprinkle a very even layer over the surface of this piece of silver. Just kind of trying to get it even across the whole surface because um, I don't want my surface to end up being lumpy or anything like that. I just want it to have that beautiful sparkly texture that the fused silver dust gives it. And if you get any larger chunks in there, just pull them out with your tweezer, or you might have noticed I just um, pulled a little piece out with my solder pick. And once I get an adequate amount of the filings, the silver filings, the silver dust on the surface, I'm just gonna start focusing my heat and really evenly heating that whole piece of silver. And we're gonna get this silver really, really hot. We're gonna bring it almost to its melting temperature. Um, in order for those silver filings to fuse. I've got a little spot kind of here in the middle where the flux is bubbling up a little bit, so I'm going to have to watch that area, but I'm just heating really evenly, trying to get this really nice and hot to bring it up to that, that fuse temperature. It, it's going to happen right before the metal starts to melt, so you really have to keep a good eye on it. And as soon as you see that kind of flash happen, you need to pull the torch away. And if you see the, the filings bubbling up in any areas, you can go ahead and press them down with your solder pick. And then as I heat, I just like to use the solder pick to kind of check and make sure things are fusing to the surface. And if they haven't, if they're still moving around, I know I need to continue heating that area. So that's what I'm doing here, just making sure all the filings fully fuse to the surface of the silver. And that looks pretty good, so I'm ready to go ahead and pickle it and clean it and check it out. So I've got my um, sheet out of the pickle and I'm using this asymmetrical coin pancake die from Potter USA to cut out these cute little shapes in my hydraulic press. So I'm going to go ahead and just use that pancake die to cut my shape and then I have two identical shaped pieces for my pair of earrings. And I just need to hand saw off that little tab. So I'm going to go ahead and do that with my jeweler's saw. So I'm just removing that excess metal from the pancake die. And then I have two pieces that look like this. And I'm just going to file the edges and smooth everything out. And then we'll go ahead and shape these pieces because I want to give them a slight dome. So I've got my pieces here and I have a dapping block and punch and I'm just going to give them a slight dome to give them a little dimension, a little curve. And I actually want them to curve inwards. So I'm dapping with the fairy dust facing upwards, facing me. And I'm just kind of gently moving that coin around in there 
and then tapping with the dapping punch to make sure I get like an even, you know, even forming. And that looks great. So I'm going to do that to both pieces. And then once they're formed, we'll be ready to um, do a little bit of final finishing and solder our ear wires on. Okay, those look pretty good. I think they look pretty um, identical. So now I'm just going to do kind of a final polish around the rim. And I'm using a silicone polishing wheel in my flex shaft. And this will put a high shine on that edge. Okay, and once that's done, I'm ready to go ahead and solder my ear wires in place. So I am using 20 gauge sterling silver wire and I have a fairly long piece. I know I have a much longer piece than I need. It's probably about three inches and I'm soldering it with a portion of the wire sticking down off the back and um, I would keep that piece about three quarters of an inch long. That's going to become my catch for my ear wire and then the longer section of the wire will be the part that goes through the ear. And so I'm just heating it up um, and I'm gonna add a small little solder pallion and flow it between the wire and my little dome. So you can see I'm just placing the little, little solder ball here and then I'm gonna go ahead and heat until the solder flows. And I have to be really careful with my heat trying to direct it as carefully as possible just on the dome and not on the wire because that wire um, will melt very easily if the torch focuses on it. The dome is going to require a lot more heat so you have to be careful with how you direct the torch. Make sure it's pointed down directly at the dome and you're not accidentally overheating the wire itself. And then just flow until or heat until the solder flows. And we're gonna do that on both pieces. And once um, you've got those wires soldered in place, then we'll go ahead and uh, form the ear wires. So I'm just making sure the solder flows fully in between the two pieces. And then I'm gonna do my second earring here and follow those exact same steps. We'll just do it one more time. You can see I still have some of the wire extending at the bottom of the dome. Like I said, I would leave about three quarters of an inch. You're gonna have some excess, uh, but that's okay. You can cut it off and save it for scrap. Okay, so I'm just adding my little solder chip here. Gonna place it in between the two pieces. And then flow that solder. Okay, and did you see that wire slump? I got real close to melting it. So that's what I mean, be careful with your heat. All right, so these are fresh out of the pickle, nice and clean, they look good. We're ready to start forming the ear wire. Obviously I have more wire here than I need, um, but that's okay. So I can bend this ear wire around. I'm using a 3 8 inch dowel. The back of a Sharpie works really well. It's a nice size. Uh, 3 eighths is kind of my go-to for ear wires. It's a size I like. And I'm just forming the wire around that dowel. And then I'm going to cut off the excess here. So I'm just going to use some snips to remove some of this excess wire. 
so that I can start forming the details. So the next thing I'm gonna work on is the catch. So I'm gonna make a 90 degree bend here at the end of the solder seam. Right there at the bottom, make a 90 degree bend so the wire is sticking straight up into the air. And then I'm going to bend that wire down and create a small little like half loop, a small little catch for my ear wire. So I'm just gonna remove, it's still a little bit too long, I'm gonna remove the excess, cause you don't wanna make this hard to use. Um, you just want to make it secure so that nobody's gonna lose their earring. So just give yourself kind of a little loop there for the ear wire to rest in. And then you can bend the ear wire itself. You don't have to do this, but I like bending it right there where it rests in the catch. I think it gives it an elegant shape. And then cut off any excess. And then you're gonna do that to both, both earrings. And then I also, um, after I'm all done forming the ear wires, I like to planish the top edge of the ear wire on a steel block with a planishing hammer. Just hammer it a tiny bit flat. It work hardens the ear wire so that it will maintain its shape. And I like um, how it, it gives the ear wire a, a little bit of a more elegant shape than just straight round wire, you know, kind of off the spool. It's a it's beautiful transition between uh, flattened, slightly flattened, and then round. It just makes them look pretty, um, but it also functions to, to work hard in the wire. So I do that on that upper curve of the ear wire, and then I do it also on the, the tail end of the ear wire as well. And this is not a necessary step, it's just how I like to form my ear wires. And then you're gonna sand and polish the ends of those ear wires after you've done this to make everything really smooth. You can put a patina on the fairy dust pieces. It, it looks really beautiful when there's some contrast between the high and low spots and polish them up and it'll give you a beautiful pair of earrings. So these look pretty good. The catch functions. And then this is after a patina and polish. You can see the fairy dust texture really pops when you put a patina on it. There's some added contrast. And then I just threw them in my magnetic pin finisher for a few minutes. You could put them in a rotary tumbler or you could polish by hand, but that's it. That's how to make your own fairy dust earrings with a catch. Hope you enjoy.